I think the takeaway is that uh, the quarter on quarter growth is also showing uh, pretty robust uh, increases. And um, the NNI, NII growth of 36% has been supported both by the corporate bank and the, and the retail bank. And um, you would notice uh, in the details that uh, for the first time in several quarters now, retail growth outstripped uh, the corporate growth. Retail growth came in at around 29-30% uh, and corporate growth came in around 27 odd percent. Um, along with this, the core fee income has also grown by almost 30 percent. And uh, we have kept our ambition of uh, core fee growth exceeding loan growth for the 31st consecutive quarter. Um, very good traction on CASA as well. And the star performer, uh, as in previous quarters, is the SA part of our balance sheet, which has again grown by um, a good 32 percent. Um, in addition to this, the book quality has uh, remained stable. Um, none of the events that we have uh, heard about being talked in the markets seem to have uh, moved the needle for us. Uh, we have come up with a total credit cost of 17 basis points as against 15 basis points in the, in the previous quarter. And the three-quarter uh, credit cost is now 43 basis points. So we uh, look like we are going to be uh, within our uh, stated objective of 60 basis points uh, for the credit costs. Uh, very small movements in gross and net NPAs. Net NPAs uh, moved up by two basis points uh, only. Um, apart from this, uh, uh, the drivers for, say, net interest income, of course, are um, the, the retail part of our business and the corporate, as I said. The retail part, the vehicle finance business, the trending is now becoming very, very evident. And uh, we saw very healthy growths in uh, both the MSCV sector section and certain other parts like auto. And uh, two-wheelers, of course, uh, started showing growth as well. Uh, in the last two quarters, we've seen some growth. So there was a positive growth in the two-wheeler section as well. And accompanying this uh, robust growth on the vehicle finance sector is also reduction in our credit costs on the vehicle finance sector. Then in consumer, uh, the non-vehicle retail that we've, we've talked about, uh, we've been talking about for several quarters now, also showed very robust uh, growth. Non-vehicle retail now accounts for uh, almost 10% of our total uh, loan book, and that also comes with a good yield. So the, the rebalancing of the book that we've been talking about, if you were to exclude the diamond business that we acquired uh, in July, uh, then I think the rebalancing has happened. We were 60-40 in favor of corporate, 60. We are now 56-44. So that's what rebalancing is happening. And uh, we believe that that has a very beneficial impact on both yields and net interest margins. So as far as the major vectors are concerned, uh, NIM uh, was stable. It moved up by actually three basis points. Uh, return on assets has remained stable at 1.92%. Uh, Return on equity, of course, fell because the full impact of capital came in. So the capital uh, averages out at a much higher level. So you know that in July we raised 6,000 crores. So the full impact of capital has come in. So the, the uh, vectors that we measure, whether it is NIM or ROA or ROE, have moved along uh, nicely. Um, in addition to this, we um, recommenced the momentum on our branch opening. So we have opened about 51 uh, branches uh, during this quarter. That takes our total branch network to 905, and uh, we are on our way to achieving uh, the total objective of 1,000 branches by, uh, by the end of this uh, fiscal year. So um, I think that's a summary of uh, what has happened. Uh, the top lines have moved nicely in uh, strong double digits uh, year on year, and also high single digits quarter on quarter, and bottom line has also happened. So I think we have navigated the, uh, the, the asset quality issues uh, pretty decently because the needle moved by just uh, two basis points on our net NPAs. So I think that's a, it's a, it's a quick summary. Uh, we also have nine months results, so the press release is with you. So we give you the quarter results. We also give you the nine months results, and the nine months results are showing a very healthy trend Again, 
uh, strong uh, double digit growth uh, in every vector that uh, you would want to uh, see. So that's a quick summary of the headlines. Um, uh, the other one, of course, is the capital adequacy ratio. Capital adequacy ratio uh, probably is amongst the highest in the industry now. So our uh, CRAR was at 16.43%. And in quarter three, I think it was about eight basis points more than this. So capital conservation, while we are achieving growth and maintaining the book quality, uh, while we are growing at uh, 29%, I think that these are the two big headlines uh, that we would like to talk about. So that's, uh, that's it in terms of headlines. I think the press release tells you all, and we are more than happy to uh, answer questions. Yes, so we had a net uh, increase in our SR book, which is the security receipt book of 31 crores. So we sold 53 crores and we recovered 22 crores. So the net increase is just 31 crores. So actually, our uh, not only the ARC, the restructured book also has remained stable. Actually, it has moved down uh, from, I think, 63 basis points to 59 basis points. Uh, so I think overall, these vectors look uh, pretty decent. So the slippage ratio, uh, which was, say, 1.29% in quarter three of last year has fallen to 1.07% in quarter three of this year. So, I think there's somebody raised a hand before you. Uh, so you mentioned about the, the SME auto loans, which is gaining traction. You said that they have quite a robust growth. I want some more color on how it has grown and yes, you know, yes. who, where are we now. Certainly. Um, Atta. Would you like to take that question? We can even show you, maybe we can put up the slide and then while Partha can talk about it. Yeah. The slide gives you the numbers that you uh, may be looking for. Yeah. See, basically um, most of the automobile uh, industry has uh, shown growth. Commercial vehicle leads the way. Um, the market growth is about uh, close to about 30 percent over the previous year, whereas we had grown over, over 50 percent over the previous year. I mean, we are we are higher than the market in most of the places, most of the uh, vectors, except for uh, two wheelers, where the market has remained more or less stagnant, and we are slightly low, which we we are, uh, we are catching up in the last quarter. Um, the industry appears. Um, the commercial vehicle industry appears uh, to have gained momentum. The last, um, it does, um, the volume is about 207,000 vehicles for the current year so far. And it is likely to the end of the year with, uh, close to about 270 to 280,000 vehicles, which is, which is closer to 300, uh, 320,000, which is the peak. Therefore, if the, um, the current uh, um, uh, trend, if, if it is any indication, Next year should be the peak for the current and for the commercial vehicle. And since we are going more than the market, we are expected to do uh, reasonably well in the last uh, fourth quarter and the quarters coming ahead. So, what does it tell about the macro situation? Uh, uh, the, the worst days are behind commercial vehicle. Can we say that first of all? And secondly, what does it mean for the macro in the sense of uh, mining, coal, power? Yeah, today, whatever has, whatever uh, the industry has uh, experienced is without the mining sector imp uh, inputs. Uh, mining sector has not grown all that very greatly. Now it is more on a replacement market and the pent up demand created by uh, slowness of the industry for clearly nearly two years. The real growth should happen sometime during the last quarter, which is uh, January to April. March and also the next year. And one of the major indication of um, um, macro uh, things moving much better is freight rates being stable, the input costs, uh, costs are coming down. And the third thing is the portfolio has improved, shown consistent improvement, not only in the NPS front, but also in various other buckets. Therefore, these are, uh, these are definite indications that the market is improving. 
I believe you already use a hybrid uh, method for calculating your base rates, but now when you move to only marginal cost of funding, what kind of impact will that have? And what percentage of your book is fixed? Could you also clarify? Yeah, so the second part of the question is about 70% of the book is uh, fixed rate. Uh, and the, uh, the new uh, dispensation which is prescribed by RBI, uh, I think it, it's a progressive uh, situation. Um, RBI has now allowed tenor-wise, uh, what do you call it, uh, MCLRs, which means that um, some sort of a yield curve will emerge from overnight to whatever, six months or whatever. And um, as far as impact goes, uh, first, secondly, secondly, it's, um, it's forward-looking, so it is prospective, right? It doesn't have retrospective effect. I think that's the biggest relief as far as uh, banks are concerned. Now, we have done our own stipulate, our own, uh, uh, what do you call it, internal uh, calculations, and uh, we see that the impact of this is very, very marginal for us.